Number 13 then. A pair of similar tensile equations you should recognise from the wave function. It says, what's the values of k and a? Well, you have a pair of similar tensile equations, so they have to find combinations that will eliminate one of them. Well, one way of doing that is to square and add them. If you do square and add the two equations, you would have k squared sine squared plus k squared cos squared. That would be k squared of sine squared plus cos squared, which is just k squared. But you probably just remember it like Pythagoras. k squared would be 1 squared plus root 3 squared. 1 squared is 1. Squaring root 3 liberates it from its square root, so it's just 1 plus 3, which is going to give you 4. So that means k is 2. The second part, now that I know what k is, I suppose you could just substitute that back in, but usually what you do is you divide the two equations. Dividing them would knock out the k's and leave you sine over cos, and sine a over cos a is tan a, so that would be 1 upon root 3. And then 1 upon root 3 is something you recognise. Now it does tell you anyway that this angle A, whoops, whoops, it doesn't know that. This angle A lies between 0 and 90. But you would know that anyway. Because if the sine is positive, it's in the one of those quadrants. If the cosine is positive, it's either in the first and the fourth. Or you could just say, where are the sine and the cosine both positive? Only in the first quadrant. So I know it's a first quadrant angle, I know it's acute. What is 1 upon root 3? I'd have to remember one of those two triangles, the 45 or the 3060. The 45 is the 1, 1, root 2. The 3060 is the 1, 2, root 3. So which angle exactly has got the tangent? Tangent is opposite, so 1's opposite the 30, so that must be 30 degrees. Looking that part up, I want 2 and 30, which is B. Number 14. Here we've got a trigonometrical function here and it just says what's the range of values, that's the output values. Well you could consider it either graphically or algebraically. Considering it algebraically you just say this, well this part here can only vary since it's a sine, it doesn't matter what you put into it, once you evaluate the sine of something the lowest you can get is negative 1 and the highest you can get is 1. So the greatest possible answer I could get would be for the maximum would be 2 times 1 which is 2 plus the 5 which is 7 and the lowest value I could ever get would be when this sign gave me an answer of negative 1 so it would be negative 2 plus the 5 which is 3 which makes the range of answers in between so f of x would have to lie in between and it can equal them of course 3 and 7 which is C Or you could just consider the graph of that, which would say that you have, you know, whatever happens inside the bracket would have no effect on the range of the answers. That simply shifts it side to side. It's the outside of the brackets that matter. So outside of this sine, outside of this function you've got, you'd be doubling the normal sine and shifting the whole up 5. So instead of the sine oscillating about the x-axis, it's going to oscillate about the line which is 5 up. And about that line, instead of just going up and down 1, it's going to go up and down 2. And of course it's not going to start at the correct place because it's got a displacement here, it'll be somewhere else. But it's going to go up and down 2. Up 2 to 7, down 2 to 3. Number 15. This line makes an angle of pi upon 6 radians, that's 30 degrees to you and me, to the y-axis. What's its gradient? So that immediately rings that little bell. Ah, the gradient is the same as the tangent of the angle. And of course they are, because if you've got a sloping line and you want to work out the gradient, you get the distance along and you get the distance up. And the gradient is the distance up divided by the distance along for the rate of change of climb. And of course, Whatever angle that makes, the tangent of that angle is the same thing. The opposite over the adjacent equals the tangent of the angle. Both are adequate measures of how steep a line is. What's its angle? What's its gradient? Because they're connected. But it's the angle to the horizontal though. So that pi upon 6 is no use. I want the angle to the horizontal, this one here. Or just translating up a bit by corresponding angles, it's the same as this one here. If that's pi upon 6, 
which is 30 degrees, then that must be 60 degrees pi upon 3. So it's the same as, I'm just going to translate it back to, I'll put it down first of all, 90 minus 30, so it's the tan of 60 degrees. If you can't remember 60 degrees, remember the triangle that includes 60 degrees. With the 60-30 triangle, I've got 1, which must be the shortest side opposite 30, 2 root 3. So the tan of 60, opposite, opposite is root 3 over adjacent, root 3 over 1, the answer is just root 3. Root 3 upon 1, which is just root 3. And root 3 gives the answer A. Number 16 then. This graph is shown here, the graph of y equals, y being the y coordinates, which of the following gives the area of the shaded section? Well, to get the area of the shaded section, you carry out an integration, which means to sum up lots of little thin rectangles, each of which has got a width of dx, and their heights, of course, will be given by the y coordinate of the top, take away the y coordinate of the bottom. Only in this case, the y coordinate of the top is always zero. So the heights of those strips should really be 0 minus this. So if I were just to write this down as 4x cubed minus 9x squared dx, that would actually give me the negatives of the answers. So when it comes to the area, I'd have to say it's the negative of this thing that will give me the area, starting at 0 and finishing at 1. So it's going to be the negative of, now carry out the integration, add 1 to the power, divide by the power, up to 4, divide by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I'll just leave it x cubed up to 3, divide by 3, well 9 divided by 3 is 3, and then evaluated from z at 1 and evaluated at 0. But that's sufficient for the question because all it says is which of these represents it, so that would be B.